、おだかぴー、おこと、いき。おー、あかたかぴーとことこ。あかたきーとこたかちぎ。おいたかうこと、ティキー。We are the Pleiadian High Council of Seven, and we are pleased to offer you our words of wisdom. Hello, Glenn. Hello, thank you for coming through. Yes, it is our pleasure. I have to say that、um, I felt a, a lot of extra energy、uh, yes. the moment that you started coming through. <laughs> a lot of extra energy. Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I've had other channelings, and、um, I've, I've maybe sat in on other channelings, and、uh, I was curious, there was something that Um, I don't know if this would be applicable to our conversation, but I would imagine that there has to be some sense or idea in this.、Um, yeah. Where Bashar, the channel, the entity known as Bashar, he had、um, made a statement, and I'm not sure what the timeline would be in this idea called time. It could、yeah. have been some time ago, but, but he was giving about 1% of his energy through his channel, channeling in that idea.、Um, is there any kind of Representation of that in what you're doing now for our conversation? Well, if you are asking how much can he handle of us, we would say it's much less than 1%. So, what would it be?、Um, Um, what, as a percent, what is coming through in our conversation for one on one? Well, first of all, let us be clear about what we are saying. Okay. You are not getting a percentage of our meaning, you are not getting a percentage of our vibration. But Daniel's body can only handle about 0.04% of what we are energetically. His body will adjust more and more as he familiarizes himself with us and as he shifts to a crystalline structure. So that is the approximate percentage of what he can handle in his physical body. At this point in time, yeah. I think that we were of taking more silica into our bodies、um, to be a higher、yes. receiver for higher energy. 
I guess that, that probably does take a little while. Uh, it's progressive, gradiated type of idea yes. for the physical body. Yeah. Yes, indeed. There was, uh, in one of your channelings, you had um, a, a very lovely example, which I've heard other occasions, that the best spiritual teachers are our children. Yes. For, for a number of reasons, one of which, and I think the one that I identified with the most is the idea that everything is a game and that they're always playing and that yes. nothing is taken all that seriously. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, in this idea, I, uh, that's probably, I recognize that idea. I actually recognize more and more uh, on a conscious level that I'm an immortal spirit in a timeless reality that has chosen to manifest into physical form and play a great game with a whole bunch of my friends. Yes. And that I'm coming to a conscious awareness of um, my immortality and the the idea of being spirit. Um, for instance, there was a time where there would have been might might have been something that had bothered me, and uh, it would be among other family members. Maybe they're bickering or not communicating well because they're older. And in that moment, I actually said to myself subconsciously, you know, um, that, you know, where else could an immortal spirit go to play a game like this with each other? And I, I kind of stepped back for a second. I'm like, oh, I mean, I, I, I'm consciously now aware almost most of the time. There, there'll be times that I do forget or I might get frustrated. Right. But I remember more and more and more uh, as a conscious awareness. And I think that that is very interesting and very fascinating aspect of the game to want to have a lifetime where you thought you could die and that might, you know, there, there was all these several. objective ideas. Yeah. Yes, several thousand yeah. lifetimes. Yes. Several thousand, yeah. Well, that was a curiosity as well, like how many simultaneous Earth incarnations that I had. Simultaneous, so you mean in the sense of past lives, but you have an understanding that they are simultaneous. Correct. In the sense of spirit. Yes. That there is an aspect of me receiving all of those concurrently. Yes, indeed. And uh, I would just, as that aspect of other simultaneous lifetimes, in the linear sense, I was curious what my oversoul chose as an expression. This is your 724th physical lifetime on planet Earth. And that would be within this linear time frame or just all concurrent lifetimes in an Earth expression? We think that both of those things are the same. Okay. Yes. And, and, and this idea of um, having like a, a lighter time of things and taking things uh, less seriously, I, I've had some, given myself some physical challenges in this lifetime. Gosh. And a lot of near-death experiences, a lot of times where it's, it's not comfortable or very easy to be in the physical body. Yes. And I found that that, is, that makes it, I don't know if I would call it more challenging, but it makes it a lot, makes it so that it's a little bit, you have to be a lot more focused on yes. the fun and the light side of things rather than yes. what might be going on right now. I just didn't know if you had any advice as to a way to look at that or a better anchor to be in the physical, um, ways to lighten that up a little bit. Yeah, so you look at what your physical challenges cause you to do instead of what you would be doing if you didn't have the physical challenges. So you look at your life in the container that it's in. And you say to yourself, well, how is it of service to me to be in this particular container? How do I maximize this particular set of circumstances for my 
potential and my enjoyment. And so if you look at physical limitations and you say, all right, so if I had all of my faculties, if I had all the energy in the world and, and thoughts of my physical well-being were never in my consciousness because I just took them for granted, I would probably be doing X, Y, and Z in the physical. And because I am hampered a bit and unable to pursue those things in the way that I would otherwise, I am being redirected back within myself. I need to spend more of my time alone. I need to spend more of my time relaxing, meditating, going within, focusing, finding ways to experience myself that, are, that do not involve taking physical action. And when you have that approach to your life, you can see how it would actually benefit you to be doing less because if you were doing more, then some of what you would be doing, let us say for an adrenaline rush, or some of what you would be doing physically would actually be a distraction from what you could be doing metaphysically. Yeah, I get the sense a lot of times that it is... Um or that I might even be acting as an anchor, as an assistant for a 5D type of reality, because I am yes. many times the, the physical limitations, basically, I, I wouldn't be in the spiritual place that I am now in the acknowledgement of the, the vast amount of information that I actually assimilated over time, having the ability to do that um, for a 5D type of reality idea. Yes. Yes, very good. And I, and I have recognized that, but it doesn't mean that I still from time to time don't um, get maybe a little frustrated or yes. it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like... Uh, so I guess what it, the bottom line is that you have to explore how it's serving you since it, yes. it is something that I did to myself. Uh, this is yes. my reality. I, I am responsible for it, even if it's not on a conscious level at this moment in time. Yes. It's starting to be more conscious, but uh, yes. the template that I made and the experience I wanted to have. So that's, the, so that's an aspect of the challenge is to try to ferret out why it's serving you. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So um, hmm, this... I was curious more about um, you or the yeah. collective and the yeah. that, well, the idea of there was a, a channeling by Pryon and it was one of the first times that I had experienced the magnitude of unconditional love that has started to be coming through the last couple of years. Yeah, this idea, um, and it actually mentions Lemuria and the Seven Sisters. Yes. And, and the Seven Sisters have been culturally uh, throughout history without any acknowledgement from continent to continent or communication in some way imprinted across all cultures unilaterally across the earth. And uh, there was a challenge that you brought through that said that you, uh, your fingerprints were... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. The, the Seven Sisters, is that another translation for or is it another idea or expression? It kind of is things? the way that many humans refer to the Pleiadian star system. The seven sisters because of the seven visible stars in your sky. So I guess my question is, does the, the council translate in any way to, like, um, any of those stories? I mean, is, is the, the council... Oh, yes, we are, we are now not operating physical bodies. 
But we once did, and we once had spaceships, and we once came to planet Earth, and we once played around with the humans on planet Earth and procreated in every imaginable way with the humans on planet Earth, especially in Lemuria. So yes, that is what we meant. That is why we are so prominent and so prevalent in the historical data that you have uncovered so far from various cultures around the world. Much more to be disclosed very soon. Yes? Uh, there's, an, there's an image in the Great Pyramid of Giza that is uh, like, uh, I don't know, 40 or 60 feet up from the Queen's Chamber, and it is a star map. And it has various stars on it uh, throughout the galaxy, but it, it definitely represents the Pleiades and Orion and uh, other star systems. And it has, it's a fractal image. It's a, I was told by the founders it is a, it is a five-dimensional image, and it's there as a placeholder. Um, yes. It seems to, to very much um, be in... An anchor. I even feel sometimes if I if I spend some time with this image, like uh, the sense of other entities, not necessarily physically, but definitely energetically. Very good. Very perceptive. Now, is this is this some of the information that will? Because there are stars, at least one that's represented on this map that doesn't exist within our vibrational reality, which could represent any number of civilizations, like the Yael. Uh, I would imagine, and as I look at the image, there's other stars that show up, other consciousnesses that show up, and you know, and sometimes leave. You know, like they show up for a little longer. Oh, look, the humans looking at the image, or you know, peering into this fractal that represents other types of consciousnesses. Uh, and it, it just it seems like it's a it's a playground for other entities to come and go as they please. Yes. Awakening, yeah, were, yes. That is what is occurring. Is, and this is basically my energetic representation of my awakening, like looking at the holotope experience of the shark. Yes. Through, yeah. Like You're staring looking, looking into it. your own DNA mm. at the patterns and the coding. And this is unlocking different codons and DNA as time. Yes. What other information, because there's still, if I remember correctly, 40 or 50 feet between where this image is found and the outer wall of the Great Pyramid in that part of the chamber. Uh, I know information historically has been written within human history, but there's been mentioned by more than one entity that soon there might be a larger set of disclosure of information in the Great Pyramid and under the Sphinx, maybe some historical data. Uh, is there... Is that energy of that type of disclosure, is that still on track for this year? Yes. It will be nothing new to those like you who have been studying up on this type of information, but because it will be hard evidence for the rest of humanity, it will create a stir. <laughs> You see, yes. Yeah, and I, I'll go back to my other question of being frustrated and being in the box and having physical challenges. I, I will yeah. also state that um, being in that box, I, I have made um, the best go of it possible for the limitations that I did impose on myself. And um, I've put a lot of this type of information out there for those energetically seeking it, knowing that there would be a time that there would be a larger subset of disclosure, that that information be, might be very useful for people that are looking for a certain um, type of permission slip to have um, more information on that particular type of topic. So, Yes, very good. 
I have hundreds of videos to that end, many of which disclose this this, this particular image and uh, other information yeah. that goes around it, just to see if the curiosity, energetic curiosity pattern might lead them to other information. So I'd like a permission, yeah. not not forced down their throat, but you know, well, here you go. Here's yes, here's planting a from yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, indeed, a from the other energies. If you're if you're open minded to that, you know I'm not going to force it upon you. So. Yes, yes, you are certainly part of the ground crew. <laughs> yes. Now I have um, some of the sense of unconditional love coming through at uh, this point in time, and it's very uh, sometimes um, feels a, not necessarily overwhelming, but it kind of interrupts my thought processes a little bit as we're having this conversation. Yes, very good. <laughs> very good. So is the what now this is represented a, a couple different ways as to the DNA in humanity, that there's seven entities represented by twelve civilizations, if I'm interpreting that correctly. Depending yeah. on the hybrids, or now what civil, what of your civilizations are represented in that DNA? But we are, we have been avian in appearance, physically. And part of that is contributed to your DNA, so you are part avian. Are, uh, is any of your DNA in any way contributed to any of the hybrid races like the Hesasani or Yal or the Playel? No, we have not. Only in the sense that our DNA is in humans, and human DNA is in those hybrid civilizations. So there would be some energetics that would be shared. Yes. We're all connected physically and non-physically. Yeah. My understanding yeah. is that between like the origin races that uh, the founders experimented with and brought forth with great love for... Um, I think in the belt of Orion, uh, a planet that would be regarded as Eden or has other names. And right. those civilizations, as um, a lot of parallel and strife happened, foresaw a lot of that, you know, things that were gonna, going, going to go down, so to speak, and, and move to other areas like the Pleiades and yes. other related areas. Are your... Uh, civilization representative of any of those races that left during that time from the first ideas of uh, humanity, that the, at least like a bipedal type of species? Yes, indeed. We did migrate over, as you say, and we are Pleiadian ancestry at that time was humanoid. Yeah. What density state do you actually exist in now? We are in a very high fourth density. Yeah. Like close to a transition to the... Yes, state. very close, yes. And I get that type of conversation and or I hear that a lot. Uh, in that it seems to be a parallel as not necessarily just humanity of lifting, but other civilizations are on the Correct. path of their density states. And I hear just to make room for us, so to speak, yes. in that density state. I'd, I'd like to have a better understanding of exactly what that means. I know since there's connected genetics and there's um, connected energetics as well, that all this is one excited thing as the one moving forward, but yes. what, what exactly does it mean energetically to make room? 
uh, to give us more space to play. I mean, I'm sure there's an infinite amount of room within creation, so I, I don't quite understand that. Well, that is, yes, one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is that the aspect of source energy that we are has done everything that it can do in a fourth density experience. So when the new kids on the block come in to <laughs> have their new experience of fourth density, we move on to a fifth density experience in order to give the aspect of source that we are the opportunity to have new experiences. Because we've done it all and just as humanity has done it all in the third. So it's simply so. time to move on for the essence of who we all are to continue to expand. So it's, it's divine timing for all the it, it's yeah. one excited thing. and it, it's, just it's always about seeking new experiences, ultimately. There's no need for any of this to happen. You understand that, of course. I do, I, but I understand also that the only way that all that is could experience anything would be to have a physical and energetic, other energetic and physical differentiations to have those types yes. of experiences. Yes, indeed. And that's, and that's why physical experience is manifest the way it is. So, yes. I should imagine that humanity's experience has been given enough great contrast since we actually did pass the threshold this time and didn't blow up a plan and Correct. manifest some kind of destruction. Correct. I guess going going through two planets uh, before this isn't too bad. There are times to charm. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, well, I guess in the same idea of having done it all, uh, 700 and something lifetimes within an Earth experience, there has to be m a great majority of those that would have done into a 3D experience. I would imagine that yes. I've, I've lived out every type of expression <laughs> that would be in, of interest to me as a spirit. Yes. So. yes. The founders pretty much said the same thing as I had a conversation with them when they actually, they said it wasn't, the, the, the driving force was that everything had been done within the universal construct. I had heard something that said they basically reached, existed in a universe that had reached completion before they actually came and seeded um, Eden as an expression, yes. and and yes. that, and I was curious as that what that meant, and they basically conveyed like well everything that could have been done was done. Yes. Like, you know, you're immortal. Eventually, you run out of things to do within a certain idea, and you yes. regroup and and have other expressions as a yes. as an idea of excitement. So something for polarity this time around. Basically. Yes, precisely. So is there any suggestions uh, and specifically that you could give to me that might be uh, easier for this transition in the way of foods or other types of things? Uh, I know this uh, everybody is unique energetically, but I know lighter foods uh, would, would in general be helpful, but I find there's certain things that I eat that my body likes more than other things. I didn't know if you could gleam into my energetics and have any. Yes, we would say grounding vegetables, vegetables that come from the ground, like carrots and beets and yams and so on, radish. Kale, stuff like that. Well, kale is above the ground. Okay. We are talking about things that are roots and tubers that grow in the soil and have to be yanked out of the soil from their womb, so to speak. Okay. So they are a bit more grounding for you and still light energetically. And uh, nuts and things like that that have to be taken from the ground does count as well? Well, nuts do not grow underneath the soil. Okay. 
Yeah, one of the challenges is that I have like a, an aggregate of things that are not happy with my body. So I will find things that are from the ground. I like that idea that it actually physically had to be taken from yes. the earth that it grew underground. Or grounding because it carries more. It carries the light from above within it and also the earth energy is more embedded in that particular type of food because it had its gestation in the soil. I find the idea of going out and uh, maybe if I can get my feet into the ground or at least go out in socks and uh, yes. bring in energy, light energy from the idea of Elcyon one of the central stars in the Pleiades, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And uh, that there's a lot of energy that comes through and translates through our sun and it gets relayed to the yes. Earth as yes. uh, information. Precisely, yes. I find that very useful and very helpful as well. Yes, yes, indeed. Now, is there any... I know a lot of civilizations have uh, call signs. Uh, I know Vashar is and uh, Adronis has one in particular, and, and other entities like Kiyoki, you know, have a symbology to be able to connect to them. Is there any symbology or I, I, ideals that can be used to connect to the council? If you want to imagine a blue sphere, energetic sphere, so not a solid type of ball, but more of like an energetic sphere that is a light blue, like a sky blue, with a dark background. That could be described as our calling card, our signature. Hmm. Now, is it the High Council of Seven? Is it different races that are represented in this, or is it just... Well, all of us have evolved from various physical forms in the Pleiades, yes. So, yes, that, the answer to that would be all races, yes. All forms, all expressions are here. So it's kind of uh, collective. Exactly. Yes. Is there a number that you can put in the way of different unique individuated entities or is that idea no longer appropriate? You could say that individuated we would be around 25,000. And I've done this for other entities as well, and I and I find uh, great uh, synergy and energetics in it. I, you you have my permission uh, when you feel it appropriate to reach into my energy and send information and light and love. Very uh, good. At your discretion. Very good, uh, and we will. Anything for recalibration or an astral state, you know, all those types of ideas. Yes, you are very open to receiving. I am. At least I like to think so. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm not afraid. Any, I'm not afraid. For the most part, I'm not afraid anymore. Sometimes yes. these physical challenges bring up old ideas, but um, I am not afraid in the context of I, I don't believe that there is any type of physical death anymore. I'm not. And a lot of times I have conversations with people that disturb them a little bit that aren't quite keen on those ideas, and I, I'm not even thinking of what I'm saying a lot of times because I don't really better it, um, or they'll say, well, what if they died? I'm like, well, there is really no death, so it's just a, a transition, you're immortal, and, you know, and, and, you know, and maybe in that context or something a, a little lighter than that, I try to introduce the idea to see if another dialogue can be struck, and uh, uh, I'm very surprised at how many people are still in fear of that type of idea. Yes. 
Well, that's the, uh, exactly. That's the it is all be. part, yes, all part of the experience that they want to have. And I've reset over the last couple of days uh, energetically just to um, send some love and acknowledgement. And how is that energetically represented to the collective? Is that to the council? Is, is that felt? Others describe it as like some, maybe some, someone softly like uh, putting their hand on their leg or some kind of gentle awareness from a lower density state reaching out uh, as we're starting yes. to flex our muscles. How is that represented to you? We would call it a warmth. Mm. What we experience, yes. Like a recognition? Yes. Like a lighting up. Like a light bulb starting to come on? <laughs> yes, in that sense of warmth mm. being emitted, Yes. And this accelerated energy in 2016, I, 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 I'm with these physical challenges and, and maybe still pushing up against them um, energetically and not, and not having as much acceptance for them. I'm, there's there's times where I feel like I'm in the energy of uh, in, in in this idea of upliftment and following your excitement and recognizing that that is more integrative as um, a collective in that if everyone's following their excitement, it is all one collective excited thing moving forward within synchronicity. Yes. And I felt, and I felt in that eddy many times, but I, I, it seems that I fall out um, more often than not, I would say. And it is generally as bumping against um, and not being appreciative to perhaps the circumstances that are at hand rather than the ones that... Because I'm very creative and I have lots of ideas and sometimes not being yes. able to let those out get in the way. I, I need to have... Is there anything that you could suggest to pull back and be more appreciative in those ideas and the circumstances that are... I, I, I would like to be more appreciative in the recognition of being an immortal being in physical reality, I think is what I'm trying to state. And I wondered if there's anything that I could do to try to reset myself when I find myself maybe having a tantrum, so to speak, as a child, you know, like maybe being frustrated. Because that's what it feels like, to be perfectly honest, is sometimes I, I feel very frustrated. Yes. It has been 25 years that I've been constricted in the body and that sometimes um, I don't feel well anchored. I might wake up and I don't, you know, it feels like I could easily slip away sometimes. Yes. Well, what is most important for you in those moments of recognition that you're having a tantrum is to accept yourself as the child having the tantrum and to offer self-love in response to that part of you that is experiencing the frustration. So rather than just looking to Fix yourself in the moment to be more appreciative, to take on the broader knowing of who you really are and in a sense run away from what it is that you are experiencing. Just be okay with the experience you are having. And when you can witness it, when you can step outside of the experience for a moment and say, oh, I'm having a, a meltdown. I'm having a little bit of a breakdown here. What is it that this part of me really needs? It is love and it is acceptance and it is compassion. And that will be the way for you to move past that type of experience for yourself. Is to give yourself the love, the compassion, the acceptance that you wished someone else would have given you at a certain time. And I do recognize, the, 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 I think the, the, the irony of that is that I do recognize that it is me giving myself that yes. experience. And uh, it's just yes. perhaps the, the ego, you know, having 
uh, a little bit of a tantrum, being in yeah. a position, yeah. and that energetically, by being frustrated, you are still giving energy to what is, and you're still manifesting those parallel reality streams and those timelines. So, and even though I recognize that, sometimes that makes me more frustrated. So, yes. <clears throat> so I, I will be easier on myself as effectively what this comes yes. down to. Yes. Yes. I get the sense that I have um, an expression from the oversoul level in the collective, in the uh, the council. Yes. That is correct. I would imagine that since in the, in the long, non-linear sense as a seventh entity, entity in this dimensional construct, I would imagine that there is room to have an expression in almost any other expression that you'd wish, provided that you're energetically uh, a fit for my understanding. Like uh, I know Earth starts interviewing people, little lighter energies, um, especially within this dimensionality from here on out, uh, looking yes. for lighter energies to come and manifest. Yes. That, um, now, th- does having multiple expressions from the oversoul level within, um, let's say, 700 and something lifetimes within Earth, does that make it easier to join or to have other expressions, uh, and that's that thinking of it from a linear perspective. But. Well, thinking of it from an experiential perspective, the Oversoul wants to have many different fingers and many different pies. So and the craving is basically is experience. Yes. So of course, the the more physical that expressions that the Oversoul has anchored the more non-physical experiences the Oversoul is going to want to have, the more multi-dimensional experiences, the more experiences as collective. So it's like a kid going to the candy store. You want to have as, as, as many different flavors as, as possible. Basically. Variety so, provides balance as well, hmm. provides the opportunity for more feedback to be brought to the mothership, so to speak. Now, how is that differentiated since it is a simultaneous experience from the oversoul level? I don't know if this could be translated into a linear experience, but I would imagine that there, as these multiple simultaneous experiences are happening and being experienced concurrently, that the oversoul is making other decisions to have other expressions. Now, these expressions, for instance, like my unique individuated expression, I understand that I'm a unique individuated soul and I have um, a unique consciousness and mind of my own, so to speak, and there's agreements between myself and the oversoul at that point in time. Yeah. That's the same for most other expressions, that they are unique and individuated so that the oversoul can have yes. more differentiated type of experience where they're not they're not the puppet on the strings anymore. They've decided to have that type of experience mutually with that unique differentiated soul. Yes, precisely. Is that a proper understanding? Yes. It's a lot to take in and hold within the consciousness to have that nonlinearity type of perspective. Yeah. But it's interesting. There's a lot of things. Um, something that I, I was talking to one of the uh, directors or writers of um, a television show called Doctor Who, and they, they play with the idea of space and time, and they have so for 50 years. And uh, I remember quite some number of years ago telling him that it was preparing collective consciousness for other ideas, you know, as we become more intelligent and we learn to manipulate the ideas of space and time, not knowing that, you know, space and time was the construct at the time. And uh, he pretty much thought I was crazy at the time. But it is really, it is softening human consciousness to the ideas of other dimensionality and nonlinearity for like Oversoul and all the way up to the one. Yes, indeed. That is one of the benefits of the science fiction genre. Yes. Is opening those doorways. Playing with those ideas. Yes. Yeah, one of the ideas that I've had that would 
that is exciting to me is actually doing a science fiction that would be a comedy and integrating ideas of um, how space and time is actually constructed in a way that could be seeded into human consciousness where you could actually um, play with the idea of infinite parallel dimensionality where if you go back to a moment in time that it would be you and any other entities that were there at the time. It would be another point in a different time stream rather than that other one, which would be fixed that you had already experienced it. So, yes, that is a wonderful idea. And to, to construct something around that and like uh, the spaceships and the you know the controls are only um, isomorphic to the individual unique consciousness that actually yes. created them because they're an expression of their higher consciousness, that type of idea. Yeah. You soften, soften that idea into human consciousness by putting it into like a, a very levity type of idea, a very comic type of idea, but still represents a science. So that was one of the ideas that I had had. Anyway. Wonderful. It's a wonderful idea. Just, I think it would be, uh, if it could be done correctly, it would be, it, not only would it be fun, but it would also uh, convey a lot of things that will one day soon become science fact and could make it easier to be uh, accepted, I should say. Yes, yes, like precisely. Yes. Like the prime directive in Star Trek, you know, that they yes. have to drop until a certain type. And I get the sense that uh, in your initial cha- channeling that you had said that you had stepped back until this dimensional yes. gateway very recently. Now, what has changed in the energy now? Is it a collective consciousness has reached another demarcation point? Or well, is this time to come through? Or? For our particular collective, our particular council, of course, we have been working behind the scenes hands off behind the scenes energetically supporting sending love transmissions sending energy all of that and we do occasionally come through without making our announcement of who we are so any time you are hearing from a particular channeled being, you are hearing from the name of the being. You are hearing from that particular being who has named him, her, themselves. But there is also help coming from many different directions in that channeling. So there would be too many of us to mention by name. And so when you think of information that has come from other channels who are talking about Pleiadians or Arcturians or Archangel Michael, we are lending a hand in the delivery of that information as well. It's so never a just ideas. a singular expression of any entity that's coming through any channel. So we are taking the lead, so to speak, at this time through this particular channel because he is ready and because his audience is ready for us. Mm-hmm. Now, there's, there's an idea that Bashar had brought through that, um, that I experimented with very early on when I not, wasn't necessarily um, on board with the idea that I was an immortal being and that Bashar yeah. was just channeling or any of these types of ideas. And yeah. it, it is the idea of building a conduit to first contact and playing around in your imagination, particularly with the eyes of the, of the um, entity that you would have first contact with. It is those exercises that brought through this image that is in the Great Pyramid of Giza that I had mentioned. Yes. Um, the eyes on this entity in this representation are exact to the one that I was imagining. Yeah. If you want to call it imagining, because, you know, my Tapping into. Was powerful enough. But yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was there. I'm, I've had... Um, 
like glimpses of an area that that might actually have or will occur or has the potential, probably better stated, the potential to occur in. Look very tropical, maybe a Hawaiian type of idea in one of the islands like Kauai. Um, I was wondering what I could, is that still the best exercise to do to build that type of energetic conduit to that parallel is to the imagination of what first the entity might look at or the eyes or is there... It is completely up to you. Whatever you feel most excited and interested in is what is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Mm. So when you take on any type of spiritual practice, you will feel an effectiveness of it for you, given your experience of it, and you may feel that the experience that you are having of it diminishes over time, that it stops at a certain point being interesting or fun for you to engage in that endeavor. And then you are more likely in that moment to call in something else, some other practice that you can do that will be more to your liking, that will give you more of an energetic burst. And so we would say you can gauge that moment by moment. You, you have it in your tool kit now. So you can always access that particular process if you would like. But it's not something that we would say you need to do every day like brushing your teeth. <laughs> so it's more, and back to the singular idea of excitement and the energy of that will draw you to whatever needs within synchronicity to represent itself. And if it is yes. the idea of imagining this or that or speaking to this person, obviously it happens because that's more the idea of the one thing moving forward in excitement rather than... Yes differentiating yourself off from all that is for that unique 3D type of experience. So, yes, there are no rules. It's excitement. It's, it's energy. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it following, there was a lovely exercise that was done by the creators where you had um, the top 10 things. If you took the training wheels off and there were no constrictions on you as a fifth dimensional, as like no condition of energy um, or yes. monetary energy of these types of ideas. And then to filter through them and go, oh, maybe number 10 is more exciting than number two is and move that up on the scale to learn to feel for the energetics of it rather than the idea and methodology since we're so used to making our lists and these types of ideas. And the ego is trying to still um, keep you safe. So some ego um, adjustment and negotiation in there as well because it, you know, it still feels destructible and it needs to go along for the ride. I think that's the thing that has been the most useful, at least for me. Very good. Very good use of that. You go, everybody's got to go along. You don't want to bring the ego kicking and screaming, and screaming and kick you down the stairs and you have to start all over again. Trust me on this one. Yes, <laughs> yes. After that many times. But that is the experience. Well, I, I know Daniel was um, coming up on... Um, some things that he needed to do. Do we still have any time, or is that is that about right? Yes, if you have one or two more questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I always have questions. I am an inquisitive thing. The one gift that I did give myself within this lifetime as an experience is I have a near photographic memory. As I as I've listened to all these channelings, I've correlated a, a massive amount of information and. Uh, a lot of the things that brought me on board were all these people that don't know each other all across the world, and some of them were saying this, the same types of things, like the uh, the central star Elcyon was mentioned by several different entities, um, yeah. by several different channels. I was like, ooh, now you have my attention, a along with a, a lot of other things. So yeah. is there... Are we getting close to energetically, or maybe I'm just not aware of... Um, I know of three of the hybrid races, like the Essasani, the yes. Yael, and the Plyel. Is there a disclosure of the fourth race? Is that energetically yet appropriate, or does that have not yet come through? 
It is not appropriate to give you a name. However, you may wish to start to tune into them energetically. I have. For some reason, I felt uh, some. Con- I felt connection with all of them, but for some reason, that kind of raised its hand. Yes. Does that help with the disclosure in all eventualities? The building a better energy conduit to them, or is it just synergistic? Repeat the question. Um, by me building an energy conduit to the civilization, does it actually bring closer and bring forth the ability to have eventual disclosure of that? Yes. You know, the name of that civilization. Thing? Yes. So of there course. is a correlation there. Yes, because so it is something time. that you really want to experience. You are drawing the experience to you through the actions that you are taking. And how is humanity perceived by, well, I know we're perceived different ways throughout creation. Some people think we're an abomination. Others think of how the heck did you actually accomplish doing what you've done and not blow up the planet, and yet others knew that we could do it the entire time. Thanks, yay. Um, How are we energetically represented at this point in time because of, what Bashar might have actually stated as the rubber band effect being in great darkness for so long. This, yes. This dimensional construct and the energy and uh, light energy photons that were the photon belt we're going through and all these ideas of entities giving energy and yes. uh, love and so much focal attention throughout creation as one of the most focal, like highly focused places. Focused in upon. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, how are we, is it like light bulbs being turned on? Is that kind of like how, I mean, I know sometimes I feel like when these onsets of unconditional love start coming through that I feel an energy come through that's just indescribable. You know, you can't put it into, yeah. aside from unconditional love would might be the only label that would be a generalization on it. Now, that has to be perceived some way because if I'm feeling it in the way that I feel it in my body, has to be some kind of representation to other entities. Does that get a lot of attention? Well, we would say that you are observed as holding more light. Mm. Being able to hold more light, to be grounding of more high-frequency energy, and yes, it does cause you to light up energetically. So yes, that's an apt correlation. I think I use that correlation because I, I think, again, it was Bashar that had mentioned that if we went back 300 years, for instance, that we would appear to glow to yes. the, the, the To time that version of you, yes. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the same kind of ideas that we're, yeah. we're holding. Bring, bringing forth more of our true and natural selves and remembering mm. Yeah, it feels like I, I might pop out of my physical body. I, I, it's very disconcerting sometimes as it comes through, but it's getting the hang of it, I guess, so to speak, as it's staying grounded in the body and having this light simultaneously. I guess that's the uh, the challenge. I, I heard another channeling that stated that it was. We understood that it would that it would be challenging that you could, before you manifest in this physical form, you can see different timelines and potentials. Uh, but we, we got a lot more than we bargained for. <laughs> we didn't realize that it would be quite as challenging as it might have Correct. been. Correct. So, yes. So to stay grounded um, and just be a little easier, as much easier. I, for me, it's the recognition of others as immortal beings that might be otherwise um, have gotten on my nerves, so to speak, <laughs> and that we're playing a game with each other. So it's yes. finding ways to be lighter about the entire process. So. Indeed, indeed. And you are doing a wonderful job of that, we must say. Have you uh, had observations of that? Yes. Now, I hear if we do have time for one more question. It is actually, now is the time that he needs to step out of this. Yeah, no worries. Yes. Yeah, we'll wait for another time. Very good. 
Or you can send it energetically if you have a moment. Yes. <laughs> we have well, like enjoyed interacting with you. And we will continue to, as you have already suggested. We are the Pleiadian High Council of Seven, and we are very fond of you. <laughs>